Good morning, good evening, and welcome to another night of local news brought to you by CIDC and Wattle. I'm Vincent Peters. First, here's your lead story. One of the country's most prominent businessmen has confirmed he is at the centre of a $7.5 million takeover of his main business rival. CITC owner and director Trevor Clark told CITV News how he got involved in the bid to rescue PDL, the company behind Foodland, Oasis and Meatco. Uh, well, yes, well, uh, two and a half weeks ago, Jeannie, we were approached by PDL to ask if CITC uh, would wish to enter into negotiations to purchase PDL's businesses. Um, we were told that PDL was insolvent, that it was not able to uh, meet its creditors, and that um, we were aware of that ourselves uh, from information supplied to us by suppliers overseas and we had noticed in the last several months a growing increase in our sales which indicated that there was there was something uh, wrong. Um, we said that yes we would be interested in, in looking at the matter in detail and at that stage PDL provided us with a considerable amount of financial information and it was quite clear to us that it was not possible for them to um, overcome the financial difficulties that they were facing. Clark says he had to weigh up the options of allowing PDL to collapse or whether to design a bailout package. Uh, so that uh, left us with two choices as we saw it. One, we could um, just stand by and let things unfold and if that were to occur we felt that it was inevitable that PDL uh, would go into receivership or liquidation and its uh, assets would be sold, um, probably significantly less than their real worth. Uh, but that's what happens uh, in, in sales of that nature. So we could stand by and seek to purchase in uh, to our advantage. The alternative to that was to enter into negotiations to purchase the businesses as trading concerns now. Uh, to do that would obviously cost us more and we told PDL that we would enter into those negotiations with good faith uh, for the purposes of trying to achieve a realistic uh, transaction in all the circumstances. We were motivated by this by a couple of things, one of them being if those businesses closed down as in the way that we saw them likely to do, there'd be over 120 Cook Islanders uh, have their jobs in jeopardy. Uh, seriously so, and the reputation of the Cook Islands with suppliers overseas was going to be damaged as well. Uh, we thought it in the best interests um, of our community that we proceed to negotiate in good faith to try and achieve a result where we could uh, save those businesses, keep them intact, albeit with a change of ownership, and to survive the jobs of the employees. Clark explains the components of the deal that was signed last Friday. The, principally the assets that we are buying are the trading businesses of Foodland, as you know it, Oasis um, Energy at the petrol station, the Meatco shop down at St Joseph's Road and the wholesale um, uh, trading business of PDR. Those are the principal assets. We're not buying their properties. Uh, we don't buy the leases, in fact we are entering into subleases from the owners of those properties, the, the head lessees being the, the Porter Group on the one hand and the Witchman Group and the Foodland property. We are entering into subleases for longish terms at substantial rents. Um, we are not purchasing uh, those properties, we are purchasing the trading business which consists of the, the stock and the plant and equipment. Exactly how much PDL owes is not public knowledge. However, the purchase price gives us an indication of how big a problem PDL was really facing. We have agreed to pay a goodwill figure uh, of $3.4 million and it's our understanding that um, from the sums that we will be paying, uh, PDL will be in a position to very substantially meet payment of all its creditors. I should add that to make this purchase, we are borrowing a very substantial sum of money in excess of $7 million. The purchase also includes PDL's interest in Exxel. Exxel is a local company 
that his previous shareholders were PDL and CITC. It started life as, as Meatco, Foodland and CITC. Uh, that company is a one-third shareholder in the uh, ship and a, and a one-third shareholder in the uh, trading operation of the, of the ship. Um, uh, so we're not a majority owner or sole owner by any means. Yes, there's some shares in the Exel company, which is part, of, which are part of the purchase price as well, including uh, some shares in the ship, the Southern Express. Yes, that is part of the purchase price. The takeover deal has broader implications for the structure of the company, including staff. Clark explains that it could be some weeks before we see the changes take effect. Uh, our first concern is a smooth, quick transition from PDL ownership to CITC ownership. It'll be a few weeks yet before the settlement date can occur because there are technicalities such as um, approving subleases by the leases approval tribunal and, and so on. So it'll be, be a few weeks um, yet and then we have to make all the uh, staffing arrangements with um, the PDL people who are going to be employed by CITC. There's a we have to do things with the computer systems and so on and so forth. There's a huge amount of operational work uh, to be undertaking, undertaken and that will be our focus um, over the next several weeks. The philosophy that has been driving this 117-year-old company in recent years is likely to continue under the new takeover deal. The company will be bolstered by a larger personnel bill, but Clark aims to keep the outlook focused on local input. We employ um, over 200 people now, and, um, and so this will be adding another 120 or so to, to our payroll. I think we're a bit of a standout in the community um, by how, how few expatriates we have employed over the years. Uh, we will continue that um, uh, philosophy uh, and indeed um, my first attitude to the PDL uh, em employment people is save for one or two, or perhaps three uh, people we wish to retain from their expatriates, we will, be, we will not be employing them and we'll be doing our best to promote Cook Islanders into the various positions. The public won't see much differences in the trading operations when CITC takes over. There will still be specials, stock has already been ordered to ensure that there are no shortages, and the business names will stay the same. Um, it'll be business as usual in the same style that we've conducted at CITC previously, there will be no change, but uh, as time goes on there will be the opportunity for us to make use of the synergies of the businesses and to use our increased buying capacity. That'll all take a little bit of time, I'm afraid. Government last Tuesday, soon after rumoured reports of the acquisition, pushed forward certain commerce legislation for tabling at the next parliament sitting in August. I have no problem with legislation of that nature, Jeannie. As you say, we already have competitors. Um, in, in, there are bound to be uh, new competitors introduced and we don't have a problem with that. The peculiarity of the present circumstances is that we have not approached PDL to purchase their business. They have been the ones in financial troubles approaching us if we can take action to survive those businesses. And the reality of the circumstances, probably only CITC was in a position to be able to take on the borrowings that are necessary for this purchase in the short time frame that was critical to be able to survive the businesses and the jobs of those Cook Islanders. That's the reality. I feel that under any objective consideration of what we have done by a Commerce Commission or any other reviewing authority, our decision would be upheld.